read the Word of God. Let me report to you about something that took place this week. I got a phone call, and um, it's, it's been kind of a stressful week at our house, but God has been good, and He's given us strength. But I got a phone call this week, and and I thought, I don't know exactly how I'm going to be able to get away and, and to, to do or get, get to this person, but I sure need to. And so I went over Thursday, I guess it was, and just got out of the hospital. And as I, I got over to the person's daughter's house, he was laying on the couch, pretty tough shape, but he opened his eyes, he looked up at me, and he said, Ronnie. And I began to talk to him, and as I began to talk to him, he he began to tell me, Ronnie, he said, I have did some terrible things in my life, but I need you to know something. I want Jesus in my life. I need you to know something. As I began to talk to him, I told him, did you know those terrible things that you've done in your life? Did you know that God will forgive you? And he said, I don't know can he, if he can forgive me of what I've done. I said, yes, he can. That's the grace we're talking about. That's the wonderful, amazing grace that saves the wretch just like me. And as I began to talk to him, I said, Do you want this in your life? Do you want that forgiveness? Do you want to let go of bitterness or unforgiveness? He said, I do. I want to let go of it. And I said, Do you want Jesus in your heart? And he said, I do. I want Him in my heart. Then it's there. So you pray, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. It's happened. And he, the light is, is on. <laughs> We could have turned it on early, but I just need to share that with you. God's good. He's still working. And just, listen, folks, please, do, do your old pastor a favor. I don't, I don't want to have to say the pastor led somebody to Jesus because I know you're just as good at doing that as I am because it's compassion and it's love that leads somebody to Jesus. And when God's people start saying, humbling themselves and seeking the face of God and turning from any of their wicked ways and seeking the face of God, you better look out. He's going to heal some land. He's going to make a difference in your home, in your life. And He's the way, the truth, and the life. No wonder His name is called Wonderful. Isaiah the ninth chapter and the sixth through the ninth verse says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he, now listen, this is prophet Isaiah wrote this in the Old Testament many years prior to Christ coming to this earth. He wrote this, that this would take place. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. You've heard me say that many times. Oh my goodness, He is so wonderful. He's wonderful in His acts of mercy. He's a mighty God, everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. You see, you when you're in turmoil and when you think your life can't go on and when you think, I don't know what to do next, God said, I got this. I've got this. Give it to me and let go and let God. Because He said, I'm the Prince of Peace of the increase of, of, the, of the government and and." Let's go back. And He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of His government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And the Lord has sent a message against Jacob. It will fall on Israel. All the people will know it, Ephraim and the inhabitants of the Samaria, who say with pride and arrogance of heart, all oh, will understand this, that He is going to be that wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace. Father, thank You for the reading of this Word. We give You the praise in Jesus' name. His name shall be called Wonderful in the Bible, there are many names given for the Lord. And you saw that in this clip. But there's many, many names given to God. Probably because He is so infinitely more than any one name could ever express. Let's look at this as we look in Isaiah 9 and 6 where it says His name, one of His names, shall be called Wonderful. Our text comes from the prophet Isaiah, as I said earlier, many years before the birth of Jesus to this earth. 
But does this name fit the one born some 2,000 plus years ago? Was the prophet correct in calling one of his names as wonderful? Let's look. Let's realize that at the beginning, Jesus was wonderful. Why? In his birth. Wow, what a wonderful thing. Normally, at his birth, though, a prince would be born into the finest of the hospitals. He'd be born in a place of luxury, born in comfort. Or, or a prince of, of this world would have had the best of everything. But this is not how God chose to come into the world. He chose the worst of conditions in which to condescend for the salvation of mankind. You see, Jesus had only one earthly parent. He was virgin born. The Holy Spirit brought about the miraculous birth of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was born in the poorest uh, section of the area, Bethlehem of Judea. No crowds watched for His arrival. Even the shepherds had to be told to go see Him. The Creator becoming man, the God-man, uh, to provide for us the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that could take away sins with His own blood. He was and is wonderful in His birth. Not only in His birth was He wonderful, but also, my friend, what a character. What a wonderful character. His character was wonderful. No one has ever approached perfection as Jesus did. It's wonderful that the greatest character ever produced should have come from Nazareth. Oh, my goodness, so many people would say, Oh, how could such a person come from a town of Nazareth? He came, listen, this, this wonderful character, person with character, came to bless. He not to curse. He came to heal, not to kill. He came to lift up the fallen and the struggling, not to cast them down or throw rocks at them or, or talk down on them. He came to reveal the Father's love, that compassion, and, and to give rest to those that are struggling. Listen, church family. Listen out there, church people. On the website worldwide, listen to me. If you're a church person, if you're a Christian person, if you have given your heart to Jesus Christ, and you're not willing to reach out to this world, to people who have fallen and people that are hurting, people that are downcast, the drunkard, the alcoholic, the drug addict, the prostitute, the homosexual, whatever, if you're not really willing to do those things, then I suggest to you to search out your heart with fear and tremble. Because I want to tell you something. Something is wrong. It's something wrong in the churches today because churches has got so high and mighty in themselves and they're strutting around and walking around like, a, oh man, I'm, I've got it together and I, everything is well with me and I'm okay. But then there's this person out here that we're going to cross on the street or we're going to see that lives next door to us that seems like they're a piece of junk because you see they're not in church. Now don't you get me wrong. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We need church because we need to be reminded of what I'm saying right now. So we, the Christian people, would get out there and do what needs to be done. Oh, I'm getting away here. Let me let me get back here to where I was at here. But the, you see, Christ came to the, to the earth at such a time as He did, to such a country as He came. Oh, it proves His divinity. For, for uh, no other has ever come to this world in such a way as He did. His wonderful character. Jesus was wonderful not only there, but He was wonderful in His life. His life was wonderful. Even His enemies could not find fault with Him. Only that He claimed God for His Father and that He would do good on the Sabbath day. There was not the slightest evidence that He was selfish or self-centered. He was always helping others. Did you hear what, he, what I said, Jesus? This is Him helping others. Is that what we need to do? Is that what I should do? Is that what just a pastor needs to do? Because, see, old pastor, you're the pastor, and you're the one that needs to make sure everybody's saved, and you're the one that needs to make sure that everything is done. You're the one that needs to go help people and care for people and show compassion. Uh, we got our hands full. We're busy. we got too much stuff going on in our lives. You see, I've got, I've got a ball game tomorrow night. I've got uh, a, a rehearsal list, and then, then Tuesday night I've got this, and then I've got to have a lunch 
with somebody Wednesday and I got it. It just goes on and on. You can have your calendar filled up. But if Jesus Christ does not have place in your calendar or your life, my friends, you're missing the boat because He said there will be no other... Look, I'm getting a little radical here, aren't I? But there will be no other gods before me. Ow! Somebody just stepped on my toe. Get off of it. Because, you see, there are other things in life that we put before God, and He don't want us to do that. We're Christians. Yes, we're holiness. We're Christian people. We're holiness people. But we're missional people. And when we go out those doors, we're stepping in to the mission field. And that's where the real work begins. Oh, my goodness. Oh, He was so wonderful. Oh, God is so wonderful in His life. Oh, my goodness. When escaping from His enemies, He stopped to help a blind man. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch just like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. If I can see, and I see that He made a difference in me, how much more do I want to serve? How much more do I want to see the light come on? Not just in me, but I want to see the light in all of us. And I want to see a fire in us that, that, man, a revival can get stirred up in our hearts and our souls that we'll step out those doors and say, I'm going to go out into this mission field. I'm going to make a difference where a difference can be made. But let Jesus make it through me. Oh, what a wonderful God. He stopped to help a blind man who had been in that condition since birth, doing so at the risk of his life. He never sought his own in any way, but always was helping others. He had compassion over Jerusalem as he wept over the people there. His first miracle was to save a peasant woman from humiliation at a wedding. And he raised the daughter of one that cried unto him for help. He cleansed ten lepers, all oh, that had terrible disease, and had only one to return to say thank you. Oh, his name shall be called Wonderful. How a person could reject or refuse to receive such a person I cannot understand. You're just, oh my goodness, I just don't understand to refuse His call to your soul in life. Well, I've, I've got more to say, but I'm going to have to wind this up. But I need to say this to you today. That Jesus wants you to know. He wants the pastor to know. I've done more. And I, I'm trying to do more. And I continue to let the Holy Spirit dwell among you to minister to your soul and your heart. But you see, He's the wonderful Lamb of God. He's the King of Kings. He, he, his appearance after His death was very clear that, that God was... His Son had come into this world. You see, no human mind could ever have imagined such a scene as happened when Jesus went to the cross and then He was resurrected from the dead. See, people can't understand how could that happen? How could He come out of that tomb? This was a barred tomb, if you will. Um, Jesus died on that old rugged cross that you and I could be saved. And if that's not enough for us to say, you know what, I want Jesus in my heart. You know, I keep try, I keep pushing this pretty hard, but... But I, I'm going to tell you, my friends, I did another funeral this week. Spoke to about 200 people. Probably 75% of them sitting out there didn't know Jesus as their Savior. I had the opportunity to witness to them as I spoke with them. Then I went on to another site where a friend of mine's father passed away, and it was a grave site deal. And I went there, and as I got there, there was two elderly people standing there, and I began to talk to one of them. Our, and then his brother come up, and I began to talk to both of them. Larry, probably 80 years old, both of them. I looked at him, where where it come from? I don't know, but I said, guys, y'all y'all know that Jesus lives in your heart, right? One of them said, oh yeah, yeah I do. And the other one said, didn't say nothing. I said, you know he lives in your heart. You believe in God, right? And he said, yeah, I believe in God. I said, have you ever asked him into your heart? Listen to this guy, 80 years old. He said, well, no, I haven't. And I said, would you like to? And he said, well, I, 
might do that someday. We're 80 years old, guys. Listen, what I'm, talking, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's going to go. He could live another 20 years. I'm just saying, you see how easy that happens? How life just drifts on by and you miss out on that? This name that's called Wonderful, this name is the Counselor, the Prince of Peace, wants to live in your heart right now. He don't want to wait till you're 80 years old. He wants to do it now because he knows it's what's best for you. Now let me ask you something. You're out here today. I'm closing. I'm not even fooling with notes anymore. I want to ask you something today. As, as people who have given your heart to Jesus, there are people that may be here today that does not know for sure that they made a commitment to Jesus Christ. There may be some folks that strayed back away from Jesus Christ. But I need to do this today. I need to ask you, is it well with your soul? If your life ended today, oh, preacher, oh, my goodness, you're going to scare the young people. Folks, I'm, on, I'm afraid we need to do more than scare the young people. We need to scare the old people. Because until we, the people, we, the people, start coming together in churches and being what we are supposed to be, how in the world is the world going to see Jesus? It's important. Today, let me ask you, it's very important. Even if you don't come to this altar this morning, right now, I want to ask you, would you make that commitment? But now listen, if you just make it because the preacher is asking you to make it, speaking to you. Some of you in here feel that right now. You feel the tugging. You may feel that you're already saved, but you're feeling something yourself. And you're saying, well, I'm feeling that tugging. Well, then talk to Jesus. Whatever it is, just tell Him, Father, forgive me and take me and help me to be what you'd be so I can be a light, so I can win others to you to turn the light on for them. And, and oh, what a blessing that'll be. Would you stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, as we seek the face of Jesus and know He is a wonderful Savior. Oh, He cares for every one of us. Oh, my goodness, folks. My last evidence to the fact that Jesus Christ was and He is wonderful is that He saved me. And when He saved me, He gave me something. I can feel something I can feel. Something that is real. Buddy, it's real, buddy. My buddy back here. You know, it's easy for me to know Buddy's name because that's his name, Buddy. I call everybody Buddy and that makes it easy. But when I called him Buddy, he, he looked at me and said he knows my name. And I've known it forever. But thank you, Buddy, because it's something about you. I'm drawn to you, you, you and your sweet wife. Oh, you've got a life to live together. Your baby, we pray such blessings on your home and your family. Oh, thank you, thank you for your heart. Thank you. But he called me about his his uncle Bobby he was having surgery. We began to pray. We lifted him up Wednesday night. He come through his surgery well. We thank God for that. Right now, where you stand, where you're at, I want you to bow your heads with me. This altar is open for anybody that would want to come and kneel at an altar or stand here at the altar and lay whatever need you may have down right here. It's open for you. But right where you stand, if you choose not to come to this altar, right where you stand, think about it. Jesus said, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in God, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe that He'll forgive you of your sin. And you trust in your heart that He's done that very thing. Then, my friends, by grace, you have been saved. You have given your heart to Jesus. Oh, Pastor, I can't live it. Because, you see, I still do a few things. I still I still have a little problem with some, some things in my life that I can't let go of. Well, honey, let me tell you something. Like I've said many times, God has the biggest vacuum cleaner in the world. And He'll be right there. And He'll be, while you've asked Jesus in your heart, He's got that vacuum cleaner and He's helping you to clean it up. But you're not walking that walk alone. Have you prayed that prayer? Father, forgive me of my sins. 
come into my heart is my prayer in Jesus' name. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus' name.